Oh man, the spring melt is on. It is so warm, I've got a hoodie and that's it today. We're gonna take a walk with the old 500 millimeter mirror lens. I've showed you guys this lens before. It's a great way to get out to 500 millimeters and not spend uh, a ton of money. I think I paid 230 bucks for this lens. It's fully manual focus. It's very hard to, uh, to shoot with because you've got to obviously focus it manually, <laughs> but it is a fantastically sharp, cheap old lens. Let's see if we can get some shots with it. First challenge is to get Mr. Gage to lay there long enough so I can take a photo of him. I think we got one, but I can't really tell if it's in focus or not with sunglasses on and in the bright sunlight. But we'll check it out. Okay. <laughs> he does listen. <laughs> Wow, it is so warm out here right now. Uh, we should be tapping trees. It has to be running today. Sap must be running. Yesterday it was warm, but this is crazy. We're, we've got to be 10 degrees Celsius right now. Spring is here! So also there is a reason, guys, I'll mention. This adapter is the LAEA3 adapter. It's not the newest one for Sony. The LAEA5 is the newest one. But there is a reason to carry the three. Um, with manual lenses, it's just as good. With m lenses that have their own motors in it, it's just as good as the new one. The new one only adds touch focus and autofocus with old screw drive lenses. Um, this three has a benefit here. You can see there's a, a tripod slot on the bottom. So if you're going to carry your lenses around uh, on a strap like I am, you're better off to bring the LAEA3 if you have it and put your strap on the bottom there so that the weight is being carried on the bottom of the adapter instead of the bottom of your camera because that puts all of the, the strain right here where the adapter goes into the camera. So you're better off to, to put your strap up there. So just one good reason to use the older adapter. Uh, the other thing I'll mention about this lens is you're not going to get anything moving with this. You basically have to be set up and wait for a bird to land on a tree that you're already looking at or something like that. You, you're not going to get moving uh, sports, you know, nothing like that. The dog running around, not a chance. It's good. Can you guys see that tiny little fungus way in there? Well, if not, don't worry about it. We'll take a picture of it and I'll show it to you. Fungus. This lens can handle fungus. I have not found a fungus fast enough to run away yet. I did leave the house with my wife and the dog. Apparently they've left me for dead. The ravens will probably find me. Jeez, you stop to take half a dozen pictures and everybody leaves. Ah, so I found the wife. She just passed me. They're only doing half the trail. She's taking the dog back. But that's good because maybe I can find some wildlife out in the swamp. Um, geese. Hey, there's some geese coming back up north. Spring is here. What I was going to say is I don't recommend this lens as a really a walk around lens. Tripod, guys. If you want to get the most out of this, you have to have it on a tripod and use it that way. Uh, also, if you are gonna walk around like this, don't forget your Sony cameras have a manual setting for vibration control. It's built right into the Sony bodies, right? Well, you have to go in and set that for a manual lens of 500 millimeters if you're gonna use a lens like this, right? Otherwise, when you try to take a picture, you're looking through the screen, everything is so shaky, you can't tell when it's in focus or not. So, just another little tip from the mind of Gary. Told you they'd find me. Well, I think that answers one question. 
That's some kind of courting ritual going on up there. The two ravens. Gotta be a male chasing a female, so I guess they're not spirits after all. <laughs> oh, they're still circling up there. Yeah, spring is here. Spring is in the air. It's just so beautiful. I I feel like um, going further than I originally planned. So let's go hike a little bit of the snowshoe trails. The light is fantastic. It's early afternoon. Uh, kind of like a muted sunlight out there behind me. Perfect for photography. If we saw anything out there in the field, you know, owls or anything like that, it's, it's gorgeous light. So let's go a little further. Let's go that extra mile. All right, here we are on the first snowshoe trail. And I'm just gonna hike this for an hour. You never know what we'll see out there. Oh, there's a chickadee. Hey buddy. There is no chance of getting a picture of those with the 500 millimeter, not a chance. I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> they are just too fast. <laughs> Well, I can't be very quiet. Every step is crunch, crunch, crunch. But I'm still trying to sneak up on whatever's out here. <laughs> we'll just... Better better chance of a bird than a... I would love to get a lynx out here, guys. That's the other thing that I've been after for a few years. You guys know there are a ton of rabbits in here. And we have had lynx uh, in previous years. I didn't see any tracks this winter. Didn't get any on trail camera. Now you want to talk about creatures that avoid trail cameras, the lynx. If you walk down a trail here in the bush, they will not use that trail. If a human has walked down it, they stop using it. They will go around and use the other trails. I have never gotten one on trail camera yet. They are very tricky. Uh, chickadees just tempting me everywhere today. <laughs> I can't take your picture, you're too quick. He's literally four inches in front of the camera. I didn't bring any seeds, I'm sorry, buddy. Helicopter coming through. I'll see if I can get eyes on it. See if it's one of those black ones or not. Well, it went way out across the swamp there. I did see it, but the sun's behind it, so I don't know what color it is, guys. It looked military, but I don't know. They love this back swamp. <laughs> There's nothing out here for miles, I don't know. Maybe these guys just go joyriding, right? Maybe the guy has a nice big old telephoto lens up there and he's just looking for wildlife. He's got a ministry job that, you know, nobody knows what he does and he just goes for joy rides. I don't know.
I get a lot of comments um, from the Bigfoot videos for, from guys telling me, you need to look on the ground for sticks that are making signs. I'm going to just show you this immediate area right here, why there's no point in doing that. I mean, look at this area. We got snapped off stuff right there, there, a pile of stuff on the ground, <laughs> the tree pushed over right there. <laughs> There's just so much natural chaos here. Then you come to this side, it's even worse. And then I see fresh snapped off sticks pointing in every direction. There, Oh, there's an X right there. Like there's just so much stuff here, guys. All of this is natural chaos. Natural, winter, Canadian, Northern Ontario, chaos. That's my bet. All right, I just saw something on the trail. Can you guys see that right there? There are no new tracks on the trail, but look at this. Somebody left their hiking poles here. Oh, maybe it broke? Is that why? No, it's not broke because I just fixed it. I just unscrewed it, popped it all back inside, and then screwed it back together, and it's, it's rock solid. It's not broken. That's really odd that somebody would just leave these behind because even if you forgot them, you think, well, I just got to walk back and get them, right? <laughs> Should I leave them here? Should I bring them out to the other end of the trail? I don't know. I guess I'll just leave them here. I don't know. If they're still here next year, well, I know where they are to come get them. <laughs> So the trail goes up here, but I'm just looking in here. There's an awful mess. I don't know what's, what is that? What's going on? This is different right here. Yeah, this is really weird. It's so all these huge branches here, like a dozen of them. Off of this pine right here. Look at all those branches that were snapped off. And that is one big pine. There's for reference guys, look at the size of that. That's, that's a 200 year old pine right there. And there's all the branches that were broken off. All right here. I don't know, I can't really say rightly what happened here, guys. There is about a dozen branches off that huge, huge pine there. Um, and they're from 30 feet up, so it's not people. People didn't pull those down. Got to be some strange wind, you know, did a little tornado just touch down here in one spot and rip half that tree off? I don't know. It's weird. Oh, that's pretty cool right there. That rock formation with the ice on it. We can uh, zoom in with the 500 and get some really cool macro type shots right there. Check this out.
Guys, the versatility of this 500 millimeter lens that, you know, allows focus right up to seven feet. I'm telling you, if you have ever wanted to isolate rabbit poop, this is your lens. Oh, look at it. See right there? We can get right in on that stuff. So the trick with this lens is to isolate things. You see that little bit of birch right here? Well, I just took a picture of it from 15 feet back there. That's, I mean, it's a photo. <laughs> Let me know what you think in the comments below. <laughs> A big part of this lens is just looking for small things to isolate. So, hey, I'm not saying that that's the best photo, but it's it allows you to be creative, right? Come on, guys, give me a break. I just shot rabbit poop two shots back, right? So, come on. <laughs> this is a lens that's made for fun. It's just to allow you to exercise your brain when you're looking for things to shoot and you want to get up close and personal. You just, there's so many more things. It's almost like shooting a macro lens. If you want to shoot close up, you can. I really can't think of another lens in my collection, and I have about 40 lenses that I've had as much fun with over the years as this 500 millimeter mirror lens. It does some cool effects. Sometimes in the background you see these little round circles. That's because of the design of this lens, so it can just add to the whole creative process shooting with this lens. All right, guys, I am a couple hours uh, down this new trail. We've never been down this one before. I'm going to turn around and head for home while I've got lots of daylight left. Beautiful afternoon, so warm and sunny, full of birds in here. Um, just amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed the walk as much as I did. Thanks for joining me, and stay tuned. Lots more adventures to come. Maybe even a photograph or two if I see something on the way home. Hey, winter spider, right there on the snow probably about five feet away from us. I tried to get some video. I don't know if any of it will be in focus. It's very difficult to manually focus. You know, the depth of field is so shallow. But that shows you how warm it is today. The spiders are coming out. Winter spider. <laughs>